Welcome to the Rubin Museum of Art in New York City. In the series Brainwave, scientists meet with people from other walks of life to better understand the workings of our minds. Here, novelist Amy Tan talks to clinical psychologist Deirdre Barrett about what goes on in her brain when she sleeps and when she dreams. We now know a lot about what the brain is doing during, during dreaming. Most dreams are happening in rapid eye movement sleep, a stage of sleep that we cycle through about every 90 minutes. And, and in that state, our, our brain wakes up and is actually slightly more active even than awake on average, but different areas are more or less active than when we're awake. And, and the visual cortex is more active yet than when we're awake. Whereas there's some other areas like the prefrontal cortex, which is right behind our, our foreheads, which is where we sort of judge social appropriateness and you know whether, no, no, don't do that kinds of, both the Freudian censorship sort of idea, but also the just, no, that doesn't make sense. No, that's not the way to do it. Is, is kind of all coming from here. And that area is much less active. You'll, you'll see the fallacy sometimes that the prefrontal is shut down during dreams. And that, that's not really true. It's still active, but it's The so buffers are a little down and you can e just. Every part of your brain <laughs> is doing something during uh -huh. dreaming, but, but some's ramped up and some's uh -huh. damped down. Somebody told me once, or maybe I read this, that you're most creative when your mind is a little looser, when you're conscious that it's a little looser. So almost in that meditative state, that Buddhist meditative state, now that we're here at the Rubin, I should throw that out. Um, <laughs> uh, that sense of meditation where your mind is not as controlled, I guess, that you're talking about. And I often think of the creativity as being um, this lack of, of separate areas, that it's as though the connections, the, 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 there's looser um, borders, and they can go right from the other, so I'm not as confined. And, and that's what I mean by a kind of synesthesia, where these things get linked together, a sensory thing, a smell thing, and they all go into one gestalt. Yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't at all think dreams are random activity. The, the, the deep centers in the brain are, are firing, which seems to be what wakes the cortex up, because during the, the rest of sleep, our brain is much less active. And then these, these firings that start low down in the brain make the car activate the cortex. But then there really seems to be a lot of meaningful activity mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. in the cortex. It's not yeah. just processing the, the firings upward. And um, it's interesting you mentioned synesthesia, because that's something that's moderately rare as a waking experience. But a lot of people who don't experience that, you know, tasting colors or, or you know, hearing sounds, um, I mean, seeing sounds in in waking will in mm -hmm. in yeah. dreams, yeah. and and I think that's just a more specific case of just how much broader the associations yeah. Yeah. are. And so that leads me to this thing. It seemed like in the committee there were some things having to do with people who might have been visited in dreams by other entities or other levels of consciousness, and I wondered, you know, what you found. Well, definitely, in, in dream accounts in general, people often have powerful senses that either someone they know in waking life or a deceased person that they used to know or, or just some famous person or person from history that, that they really kind of feel like that person is, is there. That can happen in any dream, but it also sometimes happens in these dreams where people are having some breakthrough or inspiration and um, like, this computer programmer I interviewed, Einstein would come and draw char flow charts. Of and how you don't the think it really was go. Einstein? Well, Einstein he wasn't even alive when com this sort of computing was being developed. It's oh. not like Einstein would have known anything about these. But he was the guy's. So doesn't so, he keep learning, Einstein? You know, uh, even when so he's I mean. <laughs> I can't prove that he it wasn't in the dreaming state. Maybe. Einstein's spirit. I tend to think it's another part of 
of this man's conscious. But, mm. but who knows? Definitely powerful figures that you know that represent that emotion or that have the potential to solve something that you can't or something do often show up as how some solution or inspiration is occurs in a dream yeah. is yeah. is some powerful figure who you feel like would know more or be likelier to give this advice or something yeah. is there and yeah. gives it